Oftentimes, you'll find yourself wanting to make your electronics projects portable, much like this one. But you can't exactly make this project portable if you have to plug it into the wall, can you? Well, that's where batteries come into play. Batteries these days come in all sorts of different shapes and sizes. One such battery type is this lithium polymer or lithium ion battery, depending on how you want to say it. These batteries have become famous for how well they can power many different types of devices. But what makes these batteries different from, say, NiCad or nickel metal hydride batteries? Well, in this video, I'm going to show you how these batteries are different from the other battery chemistries, how you can charge them, and how you can use them in your own projects. Let's begin by talking about the characteristics of these batteries. And for anyone wondering, for our purposes, LiPo and lithium ion batteries are essentially the same thing. Anyways, based on the internal chemistry, LiPo batteries are able to be produced in very thin and compact packages, although they can be in large sizes as well. The best part about this is that the, even though these batteries are very lightweight and compact, they still have impressive capacity and power output. This is my old Android phone, and if you open it up, you'll find a LiPo battery inside. This is part of the reason why phones these days are so thin, and also why LiPos are so popular. The other batteries, for the most part, aren't capable of being so thin and powerful in the same package. But enough with the physical construction, let's get to the electrical characteristics. Here are a few batteries that I have either salvaged or bought online for the purpose of demonstration. LiPo batteries have a nominal voltage of 3.7 volts per cell, which you may notice is much higher than other battery chemistries. Nicomelo hydride batteries only have a nominal voltage of 1.2 volts per cell. This increased nominal voltage is a big part of why LiPo batteries are able to have such large capacities, since you only need one cell a lot of the time. As for the maximum and minimum voltages, there is quite a large range. Generally, the maximum voltage of a LiPo cell is 4.2 volts. There isn't exactly a hard minimum, but it's generally recommended to consider 3 volts as empty, or else you risk permanently decreasing the capacity of the battery. Okay, while all this talk about voltages is great, let's get to actually using one of these. I'll be using this rather small LiPo cell, and we'll be hooking it up to the project that I made in my very first video. If you didn't watch it, basically the whole circuit runs off an AtMega AA which has a voltage range of 2.7 to 5.5 volts. And as I just said, the minimum voltage of the LiPo cell is 3 volts, and the maximum is 4.2 volts, both of which are well within the acceptable voltage range of the microcontroller. With that, it's possible to simply directly connect the battery to VCC and ground. And as you can audibly hear, the circuit works perfectly fine. And while this example is pretty cool, some of you may have already noticed that this setup does not protect the battery in any way whatsoever. In this case, its most considerable weakness is in its lack of over-discharge protection, which keeps the battery healthy, so to speak. A lack of over-discharge protection actually depleted this other LiPo that I used in a previous project. In order to protect it, you could possibly monitor the voltage using the microcontroller's analog pin and gain some feedback. But I'll dive deeper into battery protections in a minute, since I think it'd be valuable to talk about charging first. For the most part, LiPo battery charging processes are fulfilled in two separate parts. The first part is in the constant current charging mode. In this mode, the charger applies a voltage to the battery that will flow into it at a specific current, usually at 1C. And if you're wondering what a C is, it basically equals the capacity of the battery. So for example, this 40 milliamp hour battery, for 1C it would be 40 milliamps. Once the battery has reached about its maximum voltage, which is 4.2 volts. The charger then switches into the second mode, which is constant voltage mode. From here, the current slowly decreases until the battery can be considered fully charged. Easy enough to understand, but before you go charge your LiPo batteries with your power supply, you should be warned to be careful, because we have all seen those videos of LiPo batteries exploding when they are improperly handled. So let's look at some dedicated chargers. Let's start with an off-the-shelf component. For this purpose, I have chosen the TP4056 charging board. You can have so many of these for cheap on places like AliExpress and Amazon. This board is used for both charging and also discharging, and it comes with several protection features, such as overcharge protection, over discharge protection, short circuit protection, and over current protection. Before I connect the battery, let's make sure that the settings are correct. I'd prefer to charge my batteries at 1C instead of the flat 1 amp that it is set to by default. Looking at the TP4056 IC datasheet, we can see that we can select the charge current by selecting the resistor on the program. Let's change it to 400 milliamps or less to match this battery. We can select our resistor with this simple math equation that I found on the datasheet. 
1200 divided by your resistor in kilo ohms. After some algebra, we get a resistor of 3 kilo ohms. But I don't have any 3K SMD resistors. But I do have one 5K resistor, which gets a current of 235 milliamps. This will mean slower charging, but it will still work. And after desoldering the old one and placing the new resistor, we are ready to start testing. Let's make sure that the charging process works as expected. I attached 5 volts to the input from my power supply, and I measured the voltage and current throughout the charging process. And after about an hour, I put all the data into this graph. And you can see the points in which the charger switches from constant current mode to constant voltage mode. Now, we'll make sure that the discharge protection works properly. I attached the load and made sure that it turns off when the battery is empty. When the battery got down to about 3 volts, we can see that the output gets cut off. So this board can be used to both charge and discharge the battery within the same circuit. You can even use it while it is charging. So this is perfect for using an external circuits with battery powered in mind. And just like I showed earlier, this board is perfect if your project can fit within a voltage range of 3 to 4.2 volts. Most AVR microcontrollers fit into this specification too. But I am aware that sometimes a certain component of your project really requires the full 5 volts. And that's where boost converters typically come up. You can find all sorts of boost converter boards like this one online. And you can adjust the output all the way up and down to 5 volts. And the boost converter should maintain those 5 volts no matter where in the charge or discharge process the battery is. There is an all-in-one solution though, which are those PowerBoost Adafruit chargers. They are very expensive for something like this though, so, so up to you whether you decide to buy it. It's also worth noting that those chargers will not work for multi-cell LiPos. This is because while charging, they may become unbalanced and have different voltage levels between cells. But that's a topic for future videos. After all of this testing of an off-the-shelf component, I figured it'd be a good idea to take a shot at making one of my own. So I got on my computer and researched for a LiPo charging IC. And I found this MCP73831 LiPo charge controller. This IC will allow us to choose our charge current in the same way as the TP4056. It also comes with a neat little LED charge indicator. But this IC is mainly focused on charging, so we should get another IC for protection features. And I found this BQ29732 IC. It protects against overcharge, over discharge, charge overcurrent, and discharge overcurrent, and short circuit protection. So all around a good option for battery protection. It also requires two MOSFETs, for which I picked a couple of SMD ones, which were ridiculously big in hindsight. Afterwards, I designed a PCB and then had it mailed to me. I also opted for the SMD stencil to make soldering easier. After verifying that I had received all my components, I realized that I somehow messed up the USB port footprint. But it really shouldn't matter, since we can still test it directly anyways. I then applied the solder paste using the stencil, and using a little credit card on top of it. I then placed my components on top of the solder paste afterwards. From there, I took this hot place and placed my PCB onto it. The strategy behind it is really simple. Just wait for all the solder paste to melt, and then take the board off it. I repeated some of the tests on this board to ensure that it works as well as the TP4056. And well, there's some problems with it. The charging doesn't seem to work at all, but the battery can still output its voltage. The good news is that the battery protection IC still works. And when I place a 10 ohm resistor on the output, the voltage drops to zero until the load is removed. This is rather unfortunate, but I guess I'll just have to use the TP4056 until I get around and fix whatever is wrong with my circuit. So there you have it. Now you know how to put LiPo batteries into your electronics projects. Whether you decide to use the TP4056 or make your own DIY solution, you should be able to use these batteries without them exploding. If you've gotten this far into the video and enjoyed what you've watched so far, I'd encourage you to check out my Buy Me A Coffee page. These videos take a really long time to make, and I've been doing them at a net loss for several months now. So I'd appreciate it if you can send me some support. As a plus, if you buy one of the memberships, you get access to special perks, so check out the link in the description if you're interested. Anyways, thanks for watching. Have a good one!